Just tell them why you feel housing is a human right. It's a human right because our basic necessities are food, water, shelter, um, like safety basically. So shelter is a really big... In the richest country in the world where people don't even have a place to, to sleep. What do you say about that? And then they want us to shut down this place. Um, it, it just baffles me honestly that we live in a world that would shut down a homeless shelter that's so quick to take people in, so quick to help them and get them back on the right track and, um, you know, put them somewhere. This is the last major walk-in shelter, meaning they yes. got to go through all these referrals, and wait you three or four or five days to get processes. into some other place. And yes. they, they just walk in here yeah. and they're in need and they're trying to stop it yeah. because the mayor can't control it. If he can't control it, uh -huh. he wants to kill it. Yeah, and I was, I've experienced it firsthand. I've noticed it. Uh, people are like, "Oh, well, you can't get this unless you have an address, unless yeah. you have this, unless you have that." And then, well, then they see, "Oh, well, this is a homeless shelter. We know about this. You can't use this as your address. We can't let you get a library book or something." You know, well, let's crazy. walk over here for a moment. Let's see if what this policeman has to say. Let's see what he has to say. Hello. How are you, sir? We'd like to ask you how Mr. you doing. Right, God bless good. you. Good to, you? See you. good to see you. Uh, I know it's hard for you. You really want to. <laughs> care but you get these orders from on top don't you well i do care you know uh, and, 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 and you get ordered order. from uh, from the chief the mayor the others that you got to do this and we all feel for you could it be all right can people have some prayer with you sure yeah. hey folks let's have some prayer for this man he's got a hard job to do okay uh, yeah. what do you yeah, say we'll let's have that. some prayer for him he's a good man he's, <laughs> he's trying to a, do his job and man. you know yeah. and, and it was suggested to me that we're supposed to pray for these officers which i agree I lord god you you we come before you right now and they cut back all the mental health programs they cut back all the alcohol treatment programs they expect these police officers lord to solve all the problems then they give them orders to keep the traffic moving and keep them off the streets lord god i believe he's got a heart lord god but lord he needs your help lord god he needs your strength lord god lord we ask that you touch people in high places, Lord, the chief, the mayor, and the others, Lord God, that they'd have a heart too, Lord God. And Lord, we ask that you'd help our officers right now, Lord, officers that are needed, Lord, in communities where there's so much violence and murder, Lord, that, that Lord, help them, Lord God. And I ask that you'd be with this officer in a special way, Lord, as we pray for him and our other officers, that they expect the police to solve all the problems in spite of all the cutbacks and all these different programs, leaving all these people on the streets. Almighty God, help us in this time of, of a hurt and pain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless if you. If I could say something, uh, just from this short time talking to this gentleman, if I was in power, uh, make him chief of uh, the St. Louis Police Department. Oh, <laughs> well, keep that in mind and tell one of these guys they get elected at, okay? All right, there you got it. I mean, it's, these guys have a tough job that they got to do out here. The average officer has a very hard job to do, and, and he's trying to do his job, uh, but he's been given orders of no parking of any kind here. And, and he's trying to understand the hurts and the needs of the people. At the same time, he's trying to do his job. And, and there's been a clashing inside, so you've got to pray for these officers right now. It's a pretty tough job they got, don't they, Don? Absolutely. You know, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that there's people here who were in North Dakota fighting the attempt to build a North Dakota pipeline. Yeah. And some people say, well, what's the connection between the Dakota Access Pipeline and defending new life. They're actually the same struggle. Native Americans will have their water destroyed, will have their sacred lands destroyed, and be kicked out with no place to stay if the Dakota Access Pipeline goes in. The same sort of thing is that they are victimizing the, the people who have the least, who have the least power, who have the least money. Whenever there's land which yeah. becomes more valuable, then people are driven off of that land. Mm -hmm. That land can be land which is held by D Dakota Sioux in North Dakota. It can be land of Mexican Indians who, who have the unfortunate situation of living on top of where gold is. So, and they're pushed out for that land to, so that people can take the gold. Or it can be people who live by a mountain and they destroy the mountain to extract the coal from that mountain. Or it can be people who are homeless who find themselves in the unfortunate situation that they're staying in a piece of land that suddenly becomes extremely valuable because you can build expensive lofts to it. It's all the same issue, whether you're talking about North Dakota, United States, St. Louis, Missouri, whether you're talking about Mexico, whether you're talking about Peru, or whether you're talking about lands in Indonesia or in Asia, it's happening all over the world. And so when we're defending new life, we're not just defending the homeless in St. Louis, 
We're defending the homeless all across the United States, and we're defending every native person in every village where people are pushed off of the land so that somebody can make a lot of money off of it. Years ago, they wouldn't let African Americans move into the neighborhood. Now these urban pioneers move in the neighborhood and push them out of the neighborhood. Ab abs absolutely. We see, we see this bigotry. And, and, uh, we see the loss behind us here, and, and, and we see that they, the homeless were here first. Now they're trying to push them out just like they did the American Indian. And, and it's, it's the same thing. We, many of us know the stories of Indians being in one place, and then European Americans come in here and saying, well, that land is valuable for us, so we're going to move your reservation here. And another tribe is told, okay, well, this land is valuable for us. We want to settle it, so we'll move the reservation there. And, uh, and so it's, it's happened for hundreds of years, and what's happening to the homeless is not different from American history. It's repeating the stories that we've heard so many times. And, but they're not even giving the homeless one acre ground. They're not giving the, these people right. a reservation. Nowhere right. else to go. They want to shut us down. No, they're not offering no any other place to go. All the people sleeping on the street, they keep pushing, pushing. We're saying, look, if you can give developers like McGee 100 acres of ground, uh -huh. give the homeless an, an acre or two where they can have the community. Absolutely. Then you won't have all the stuff scattered all over out here. They could go to that place. They want to be outside. A absolutely. And what, what, one of the worst situations right now is that people who are homeless need to be in a location like New Life because so many people are receiving help from the government. And if people are scattered all over everywhere, they can't there's not the transportation system for people to get to where they need to go, to a social security office, to a Medicaid office, to a food stamps office. But when you're in the center of downtown St. Louis, that's the best place for a person to be, if you're homeless and you're in a shelter and you need multiple agencies who can help you, this is one of the best places to be. So to push people out of this area is to not only mean that they have no place to go, but also means that if they're, uh, if they're sleeping someplace else, they, do, they can't get the, the multiplicity of social services that they need in order to survive. Thank you, Don. I'm going to walk over here and see what this man has to say. How are you today, sir? Uh, pretty good. What, what do you think about all this? Well, I think that New Life Evangelistic Center is, um, is the only crisis a homeless shelter left in St. Louis, and if this closes down, then there'll be no place for the homeless to go. So it's very important to, um, you know, uh, just to keep, to, to, uh, to have um, uh, as much shelter as we possibly can get for, uh, for all of the people who need you're it. You're out here, you're in the rain, you're in the yeah. cold. But think of the people that live out here like this. Yo, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm out here, because the homeless don't have any place to go. You know, if this place closes down, then, you know, what will they do? Freeze to death. That's right. You know, that's, that's just not right. Thank you for sharing You're that welcome. with us. Thank you. And we see we got a sign over here. Won't you be our neighbor? We're trying to just be good neighbors uh, all over, people all over. Tell us why you're out here. Um, we're out here to protect um, rights of homeless people, protect NLC from being shut down by Mayor Slay. As an all-inclusive homeless shelter, I do believe it's incredibly important for St. Louis City uh, that this shelter remains open and functioning. And that's why it is, and to retain people's rights to have a place to go in their, in their time of need. And that's what we're trying to do here, and that's why your gifts are so very, very important. Your hearing gift is absolutely critical because we're facing tremendous financial needs here. Uh, you see out here that they try to redirect the donations that uh, come to the New Life Evangelistic Center. No stopping or standing on street or at curb for information about contributing food, clothing, or personal items. Then they give the number for the mayors. Then no parking, tollway zone, no, no parking for um, uh, handicapped people or anything like that. I mean, folks, something's wrong in a sick system like this. I mean, he wants to redirect the donations to his favorite charity when we just want to put it in the hands of the hurting and the homeless. It's hurt our donations this year. We need uh, a financial miracle, and I'm asking all of you to please be a part of that. Uh, uh, this has uh, been very difficult. They pulled out all the meters on both sides of the street, taking away the 30-minute parking. Try, I know why, because they want to direct people to the Waltrofs parking lots around here is what they try to do, uh, and uh, harassing new life, ongoing harassing. I mean, we'll make the necessary uh, corrections, the necessary things we need to do to have a safe, secure pro pl uh, place. But you know what? Uh, the fact is, is that uh, when they start saying, oh, you got to put fifteen dollars to $20,000 hoods over an electric stove for the men that live up on our th fourth floor, a Christian community up there, and a second floor, I mean, uh, something's wrong with all of that. And, uh, and we just see them trying to do this and this ongoing harassment. Uh, something's wrong in all that. And, and I'm asking all of you to keep us in your prayers here. Yeah.